Greetings, unsettled souls, and a welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for the Media Speaks, and it is time! The Dunks Cap of the Month Award. Um, before I do that, I'm going to do two things real quick that you wouldn't expect me to do. Um, uh, first of all, I'm going to announce uh, a thank you to the Canton Police Department, which you would not expect me to do of all people. But a uh, person that I know was at a place that I was at, and that's all the info you get. And unfortunately, this person is schizophrenic. Had an absolute meltdown, uh, even uh, pushed an officer, and, uh, you know, they, they, they took him down like they had to. But they didn't beat him, they didn't tase him, they didn't kick him. I mean, I was, you know, they, they did the best they could. So I'd be a hypocrite, and I would have no credit at all if I didn't say that, because I rail against cops when they mess up, and they did, they did amazing. Um, the, second of all, I'm going to denounce the first ever, well, kind of, the first ever major uh, Correct Views contest. For those of you that don't know, the Delta Cap of the Month Award now has been going on for an entire year. It started last January. I need you guys to let me know what is your favorite dunce cap for the much coveted, highly revered <laughs> dunce cap of the month award. That's right, friends. I need to know what you think should be the stupidest. Here, here's some of the ones we have. We have the uh, Ramsey Burrow one. We have the dunce cap of the month award for the Virginia Beach City Schools. Uh, the radioactive silverware, which is likely going to be my pick. Uh, Abercrombie and Fitch offending fat people. Uh, the Ohio judge not letting a man uh, have his birth certificate prove that he's alive when he was alive. Uh, there's lots of them. You cannot use the Indiana DNR because they changed their stupid ways. And as such, I'm not going to harass them anymore. But I need you to go through the entire year. Just type in into YouTube the Dunce Cap of the Month Award Correct Views. All of them come up. They're posted on the Media Speaks and uh, um, uh, Correct Views on YouTube. So when you see more than one, don't panic. And I let people remix my stuff. But there's, there's uh, from January to, well, this is now December. I need you to pick which of those was your pick for stupidest. They will be mailed a dunce cap for the dunce cap of the year. In other words, you are stupider than everybody else. And I need to know which of my 12 episodes you think should get that. And they will, in fact, be mailed that. What will you get? Um, everybody that votes, I'm going to put your name into a hat. And I'm going to have someone, probably Christelle, uh, pull that name out. And uh, it doesn't matter if uh, yours wins or not. I just need to know that you enter it. Somebody is going to get a, a passing time. That's the band I'm in. They're going to get the Alexandrian solution. They're also going to get a copy of our videos, which is uh, Break Me, um, that Kyle Phillips created, uh, War on For Your Mind. There is uh, Bazooka Joe's Revenge, and we'll probably put the rise on there. I don't know. Um, go... Enter, let me know what you think the dumbest of all the videos I've posted. Once a month, there's been a Dutz Cap of the Month. And friends, there's been so many dumdies this month that I, I can't even cover the first three. Let me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven! So I can't cover the first four. I don't have enough time. I do six, six segments per show, and every time I go longer, it goes on forever. So here are people that are not only stupid, but not quite stupid enough to be one of the ones that are worthy to cover. That's how much stupidity is about to be coming your way. Um, Prison Planet, Brandon Walker, FEMA camps, the city to exile the homeless. It's not a conspiracy theory. Uh, the, 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 they're moving homeless people into, like, prisons. I thought that was, that was uh, definitely worthy of mention for the dunce cap. Um, Infowars, Steve Watson, Backwoods Society, a sombrero Halloween costume was, was branded as offensive. And the 9-11 uh, attack costume won the best award. And it was uh, these two bimbos with uh, planes crashing into them. And you know what? It's dark humor. I don't really care. I'm not offended by it. Let people wear whatever they want. 
but calling a sombrero racist and idiot. Dunce caps! Um, this is a uh, conservativereed.com. Police called and a man was arrested and cuffed after using a legal $2 bill to at Best Buy. Uh, the police did not know that a $2 bill was in fact real currency. Nobody in the store knew it and they arrested him. Yep. Stupidity! Incoming! Uh, the last one I can't cover all the way, but there's just it's just too stupid for me not to at least mention it. Uh, oh wait, what, what, what's the name of the idiot police that did this? Uh, you guys have to, you guys do have to know that. I'll go to the conservative read, but I mean, yes, obviously. Baltimore Sun. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> brilliant police out there, isn't there? All right, and uh, the last one that I couldn't get to from uh, addictinginfo.org. A Texas school throws a child's breakfast in the garbage to bully him out of 30 cents. The kid didn't have 30 cents, so they threw his food away in front of him in... And it's in Texas. Where is this uh, Where is this school at so that you guys can uh, give them... Uh, there's Barber Middle School if you guys would like to send them... Uh, any words of encouragement for how kind they were. Maybe send them 30 cents in a garbage bag with scummy people. All right, guys, on with the people that I am going to cover for the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Soros' crony. Current energy policies partly caused the typhoon. The killer typhoon we just had. This dummy is blaming global warming. Climate Gate has proven that man-made global warming is a lie. We have stacks of papers and scientific studies from anybody not tied into the UN proving that it's not happening. Ice is growing in other sections. Um, the planet has not warmed in 15 years. This is scientific fact. And yet, these idiots, idiots, it's why I do that Dunce Cap of the Month award. More typhoons will happen unless liberal energy policies are adopted and those who disagree have blood on their hands, at least according to alarmist and almost dunce cap winner Jeffrey Sachs. Sachs, a friend of liberal billionaire George Soros, who definitely should get a dunce cap someday, and head of the Earth Institute at Columbia University, and a favorite of news media, appeared on MSNBS's Morning Joe on November 12th to discuss the recent tragedy caused by Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines. What's happening here, and this is part of what people have a hard time, you know, coming to grips with, is that we're partly causing this sex lied. We're causing, which we're not, this because there are more and more of these storms because of the way humanity is changing the world's environment. That's great, except for the fact that we're not. Sachs referenced an unnamed study that said that inclement weather was getting worse over time. I brought along from 2009 a scientific study showing that the number of extreme storms, or not the frequency, but the power of them, has been rising decade by decade as the ocean water is warming, and so this kind of event, we're seeing more of it. Sachs, the idiot, claim is, was right out of the global warming activist playbook for any sort of natural disaster. However, he ignored the Atlantic hurricane season forecast bust in 2013. In fact, so far, 2013 has seen only two storms, has, only, has been only two storms away from going the entire season without a single hurricane. Hurricane cyclones and typhoons are all in the category of tropical cyclones according to time. Times Brian Walsh, in a piece advocating for reductions in greenhouse gas emissions, admitted that the IPCC's latest report had low confidence there would be more intense tropical cyclones in the coming decades. He also wrote, if existing climate change played a role in supercharging high end, it is the likely tiny as NSA climatologist Bill Patzer told the Pasadena Star News. The fingerprint is very small, if at all. If the winds were 200 miles an hour, global warming might have contributed 5 miles an hour to that 200. <laughs> Despite it says what Sachs and the media have claimed about climate change, not all scientists are of the same viewpoint. 
More than 1,000 scientists, and there's a link, are on record dissenting in some way from the so-called consensus. U.S. government atmospheric scientist Stanley B. Goldenberg of the Hurricane Research Division of National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration has said, quote, it is a blatant lie to put forth in the media that makes it seem there is only a fringe of scientists who don't buy into man-made anthropogenic global warming. Other scientists disagree about the extent of man's influence on climate or over how threatening it is to the planet. It says, according to Sachs, those who oppose changing the way our nation uses energy are to blame for these kinds of disasters. The fact is... We are not warming the planet at all. The planet is not seeing worse storms. The planet's not seeing more storms. Here's a trick they do, though. Let's say you can prove that from... Oh, I'm going to make up a number here. I'm not, not this part. I'm just, I'm just giving you an example. That you can say from 1999 to 2003, there was maybe a super low incidence of hurricanes. Well, then you would use the following three years that have normal, but it would look like it was such a huge spike that you could prove that we were causing it. That's the kind of false logic they use. They'll say, this is the longest we've had in this long. Look how bad. Well, yeah, that's because they're hiding a few years before where it was exactly then as it is now. By shortening the cycle, they can make it sound more severe. Um, they almost want it, this almost won it too. Head of banking group pushes Republicans to back immigration reform, the LA Times. The head of the American Bankers Association, oh, we can trust them, who is a former GOP governor, made a strong pitch Monday to his fellow Republicans to support the bipartisan Senate immigration reform legislation by invoking partner hero Ronald Reagan. One of the things Ronald Reagan did that did not work was amnesty, because what he did is he granted amnesty to a bunch of illegal aliens, and then, of course, what did we get? More illegal aliens. Um, I've said it a million times, I am in favor of making it easier to get into the country, I'm in favor of work visas, I'm in favor of uh, getting into the country without it having to um, bankrupt you. However, I'm not in favor of illegal immigrants staying in the country. They bring the economy down, they are used as slaves, and they don't do the economy any good. They have a border. Look at the Mexican border. They have a fence and snipers near Guatemala. So don't tell me they would allow it to happen there. And the reason this almost won the Dunn's Cap of the Month award is the Republicans don't do very much right. Uh, and one of the things that they do do right, that they're trying to get them to undo. Yeah, a great idea. If you really want to lose votes, Republicans, listen to that. Um, FoxNews.com, Florida, Florida City uproots couple 17-year-old garden over a new ordinance. This is frustrating to me because you can't have an ordinance that says we're not going to allow any black people to live here. It's just a city ordinance. You're not allowed to do that, and you shouldn't be allowed to do it. You should not be allowed to have ordinances that override people's existing constitutional right. Can I be more clear? I don't think so. Few things in life are as benign as a home vegetable garden, but for the residents of Miami Shores, Florida, growing veggies can lead you on a fine, the type you eventually can't afford. That's what happened to Herm Hermione Ricketts and her husband, Tom Carroll. For the past 17 years, they've grown a garden in the front of their modest South Florida home. The backyard, they say, doesn't get enough sunlight. But in May, the city put the couple's garden and others like it in their legal crosshairs. A new zoning ordinance, which should be illegal, uh, designed to protect the distinctive character of the Miami Shores village, was enacted and specifically prohibited vegetables, not fruit, trees, or even plastic flamingos from appearing in the front yards. Shortly after, the couple received a visit from their local code enforcement officer who almost won the Dunce Cap of the Month award. They were given two choices, uproot the garden or pay $50 a day. It says after twice appearing before the code enforcement board and being denied the exemption, they decided to dig it up rather than pay $1,500 to the city. So, you know, yeah, you know, they can go after the gardens and nobody cares. They can go after the guns in California. It's just an ordinance. You cannot make an ordinance that goes against a person's basic, basic right. Scum! 
Uh, guys, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on Bud K. When you do so, in that order, Media Speaks, Bud K, you will be helping us greatly because not only do they support us when you do that, but you also get some of the best camping items, survival items. They've got fantasy sword items out there. Uh, you name it, they've got it. They've got the $5 wallet savers, which will give your loved ones amazing gifts. They've got survival blankets for $1.99. And you might laugh when you hear that until you realize, hey, wait a minute. Do I know anybody that could be stranded in their car for a couple hours waiting for a tow truck? Maybe somebody elderly? A $1.99 survival blanket. They wrap it around them. They don't free freeze to death. It's that simple. Um, also, friends, if you are in Canton, Ohio, make sure you go to the Arcadia Grill. Some of the most delicious food that you will ever consume in this city is in that restaurant. They've got spaghetti and meatballs that you, you, just, you, you can't stop eating the meatballs even after you're stuffed. Go to the Arcadia Grill and make sure you let them know that you heard about it on The Correct Views. Friends, uh, Paul Joseph Watson, InfoWars, family threatened with police monitoring over transgender complaints. Basically, a bunch of he-she-males have decided that they don't know what sex they want to be. And everybody else is supposed to give up their right to a private bathroom so that they can do it. I've said it a million times. If you want to get your schlucker cut off, I don't care. It is your right to do so. But just know that that does not make you a woman. It simply makes you a mutilated man. Um... I, I, I don't mind unisex bathrooms. I have always thought, thought that all bathrooms should be unisex bathrooms. Always thought it, always will. But if that's not the policy they have, then these gender-confused people are going to have to go into the bathroom that is the sex that God assigned them. Idiots. Parents who complained over a boy who identifies as a transgender being allowed to use the same public bathroom as their daughters at a Colorado high school have been threatened with police monitoring of their social media discussions. Yeah, let's them decide they want to monitor me. I'll give them something to monitor. I'll give them a novel on Facebook. Bring it on, scum. As we reported last month, parents of daughters attending Florence High School, who almost won the dunce cap for obvious reasons, said they were threatened with hate crimes charges when they complained on behalf of their daughters over a boy who identifies as a transgender being allowed to use the female bathroom. Tell him to get his confused ass in the men's room! Ridiculous. Um, again, how, how a hate crime? No. I think hip-hop sucks because musically it sucks. People would call me a hater. No, I don't hate them. I don't want them to die. I just want them to quit making music. Who? Justin Timberlake, Rihanna, Drake, Kesha. Uh, well, she's not really hip-hop, but she's just as bad. You know what I mean. Hate. Oh, it's hate that you don't want this boy that doesn't know who he is inside to be able to just jump into the bathroom whenever he wants to. That's hate. According to the Pacific Justice Institute, a conservative civil liberties organization, the school is now threatening families that their social media conversations about the issue are being monitored by police. Parents and students involved in the case spoke out in an emotional video released by PJI, also whose claim that the supposedly tolerant lesbian, bigender, gay, trans community was bombarded them with hate mail for representing the parents. Well, you know what? It doesn't change the fact that the guy with the wang needs to go into the guy's room. Hate to be the one to tell you. Um, guys, shtfplan.com. CNN, you came within a breath of getting the dunce cap of the month award. If you're a Christian, CNN says, it's your fault that people don't have health insurance. Mark Savo. Slavo. As tens of millions lose their health insurance benefits in the coming months, mainstream media establishment centerpiece CNN has been investigating why there are so many poor and underinsured Americans. In an investigative report entitled The Obamacare Scandal You Haven't Heard About, CNN journalist and near Dunce Cap Award winner John Blake thinks he's figured it out. Keep trying, John. You will get that cap sooner or later. 
It's not that the government has created an air of learned helplessness or shipped jobs to foreign countries through restrictive legislation and taxes, or that Americans have seen their purchasing power decrease exponentially, making it impossible for them to meet their basic needs. Nope, that's not what it is, people. And the Patient Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, certainly can't be to blame, even though the health exchanges don't work and people are being rapidly removed from their current health insurance policies because of regulations set forth by the new and also illegal law. Or that those who do manage to sign up will see a tripling of their rates, which will further impoverish them. No, the problem, according to this pumpkin head and CNN, is the Christians specifically the Christian pastors and their churches in southern states, who have apparently done nothing to address poverty or failed to push their governments to expand social health care services through forced wealth redistribution. Quote, in an article on CNN.com's belief blog, a CNN writer John Blake says that while, infamous pa while famous pastors preach in states where crosses and church steeples dot the skyline, and they do nothing about the poor who can't get health insurance they would receive if they lived elsewhere. That refers in turn to the decision of 25 states not to participate in Obamacare's expanded medical funding. God bless those states. The states were allowed to opt out following last year's controversial Supreme Court decision on Obamacare, which upheld the law as a whole, but struck down the mandatory state participation. Now, here's why, I, I, this, this is why, uh, I'm going to point out the obvious here. This is why, John Blake, my dear friend, you were almost wearing a coned hat. If CNN and John Blake would have done their research, they would have found that if there's anyone in the country providing community outreach to the poor, handicapped, and uninsured, it's faith-based networks, most of which are Christian. In 2001, there were approximately 26,000 food pantries in America. Of those, fully 75%, that is three quarters for you Usher fans, were operated by faith-based organizations. They were staffed uh, not by government employees bilking the system for millions of dollars in reckless spending and outrageous benefit and pension plans, but by Christian volunteers. In fact, nine out of ten people working in faith-based food pantries in America are volunteers doing so out of their own free will, good nature, and need to give back to those less fortunate. In other words, it's, uh, you know, again, it says here, Christian hospitals are the organizations that raise hundreds of millions of dollars a year to assist the poorest in our society. That's usually Christian hospitals. So, I mean... Stupidity has no end, friends, and uh, CNN's John Blake almost got a coned hat, but I couldn't because this was stupider. Cops tase father trying to save his three-year-old son from house fire. I was positive that I was going to give this police department the Dunce Cap of the Month award, and the reason I didn't is because the officer may have really made a decision that he regrets. Because while it is the stupidest thing I've ever heard about anyone doing, he was trying to save the father's life. Having said that, this is the dumbest thing I have ever heard. This officer, and I know he has to be hurting right now, so I'm only going to say it once, made a pumpkin-headed decision. A Louisiana, Missouri father was prevented from saving his three-year-old son from a house fire when cops tased him three times for attempting to enter the burning building. That's, that's either the meanest or stupidest cop ever. The fire started in the ground floor playroom while the parents were asleep in the living room. The toddler was asleep upstairs in the bedroom. After waking up to the smell of fumes, the parents managed to get outside before calling 911. Stepfather Ryan Miller then kicked down the front door to the building as police officers and firefighters arrived. The house was too hot for firefighters to enter, but when Miller attempted to rush in and try to save his stepson, he was restrained and then tased three times by a city police officer. He tried to get back in the house and get the baby, grandmother Lori Miller told KH, 
QA. They took my son to jail because he tried to save his son. Now that is why they almost got it, because they took him to jail. Three-year-old Riley Miller was later found dead in near the doorway of his bedroom, and the house was completely destroyed. I hope they sue this police department, and I hope they win. It's just heartless, how could they be so heartless, said sister-in-law Emily Miller. And while they all stood around and waited for the fire department, what kind of officer wouldn't try and save a three-year-old from burning in a house fire? This is perhaps, it says, the most egregious example to date of police officers engaging in the kind of behavior that defies any rational explanation. Uh, very true. Very, very true. But no, no. That is not what I saw fit to give the Dunce Cap of the Month award winner to. No! Read it. Here it comes. Oh, where's the music? Let's get the music going. We gotta have the Where'd the music go? Oh, hold on. No, no, this has to happen, friends. This is dumb beyond all dumbs. Where is it? Give me my song. Where's my song? Oh, no, no, no. Can't do it without the song. Simply, there it is. There we go. Oh, yes. What has won? Infowars.com. College students on school probation for using gun against intruder. Two seniors at Gonzaga University in Spokane, Washington, who did win this month's Dunce Cap of the Ward, were placed on indefinite suspension after they used a gun to defend themselves from a six-time felon trying to break into their apartment. The students faced expulsion because the school banned guns from both of its on-campus and off-campus housing. You cannot pass a law that goes against someone's basic rights. You can't do it. So, Gonzaga University in Spokane, Washington, you have won the freaking Dunce Cap of the Month award. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read exactly what this says here. Um, I, think, I think, guys, the way I wrote it, it says it all. Here we go. The Dust Cap of the Month Award. Yeah, I wish it would open. Hey, what is nothing on this computer ever, under any circumstances, ever want to work for me? The Dust Cap of the Month Award. To anyone who follows the news of the world around them, it is of no shock to hear that the education system in the United States of America is failing yet again. Still, even with in mind, uh, you adults at Gonzaga U have proven that you stand not only against the God-given right of self-defense with a gun, which our Constitution declares in fact is a right, but you are punishing two students who did nothing wrong. A school policy against the right to keep and bear arms on school property, I wrote, is no more legitimate than would be a policy that forbids certain races from attending. Such a policy would be illegal. It is for these reasons, and for the good of common sense as a whole, that you utter fools at Gonzaga U win the much sought after Dunce Cap of the Month Award for not only attempting to forbid students the right to not have to trust campus security for protection, but you were also dim of mind enough to push for punishment, thus acting as if you have some legal right to do so. Thank you, I wrote, for making our young minds dimmer, for proving that American rights need to be stood up for, and for making the world a more rotten place thanks to you being in it. You have earned your hat. Wear it! And I let them know that they can find it here. So friends, uh, go to InfoWars and listen to the actual uh, link on the news. Uh, they, they say that, you know, you should trust campus security. It, it made Christelle sick. So this is, uh, well, that is the award that they're going to have sent to them. And then they're going to get this hat. It says, Dots, school colors no less. He legally owned his pistol. We still have a second amendment, question mark. And this is a stick figure knocking on a door. Can I rob you? Because robbers ask, let alone knock. 
Here you go. You've won the Dunce Cap of the Month award because you're an idiot. Friends, thank you so much for listening to the show. Please donate if you can. Every penny that you give me goes towards a better show, goes towards better gear. Please go to the Arcadia Grill when you're hungry, and when you want your news, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Look at the work of Kyle, Court, D. Lake, and myself. Good night, friends. God bless, and try not to win the Dove's Cap of the Month award.